What's up everyone? I'm Andrea, your Real Life English Fluency Coach, and in today's lesson, we'll be learning all about English expressions that confuse everyone. So in today's lesson, you'll have a lot of fun learning these English expressions, and it will help you to understand natives better, and you can even start using them yourself. In case you're new here, we are here to guide you beyond the classroom to live, learn and speak English in the real world. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so that you don't miss a single one of our new lessons. In the first part of this lesson, we'll go over a few funny and confusing general English expressions. Then we'll focus on expressions you'll only hear in British English. Okay, so we're going to dive straight into the lesson and start learning these expressions. And the first one is chinwag. So this is a really funny one. And basically this means to have a chat. So instead of saying, oh, I was chatting to my friend the other day, some people might say, oh, we were having a good old chinwag. And I guess this comes from your chin is obviously this part of your face. And as you are talking, as you are chatting more, it does tend to move a lot. And another way of saying that is wag. So it's like your chin is moving a lot when you're talking. Um, we would use wag to describe the way that a dog's tail wags, for example. So when a, a dog wags its tail, it's moving like this. So if you think of it this way, it's not one of the most confusing ones, but definitely if you're hearing it for the first time, it might sound a bit strange, but natives do use this one a lot. So you might hear them say, oh, I was having a good old chin wag with this person the other day, or how about we meet and have a good old chin wag? Okay, so the next expression is full of beans. And no, this doesn't mean that someone ate lots of beans for their lunch or their dinner. What it means is someone has a lot of energy and they are very lively or excited. So it can also mean that they have a lot of good spirits. So they're feeling really happy, really energetic and full of life. You will often hear natives use this expression when referring to children as well. So those moments where children have a lot of energy and are running around, you might say, oh, they're full of beans today. And that just means that they are very lively. They have a lot of energy. Okay, so the next one is the opposite. It could mean that you are in low spirits, so you're not feeling very well, you're feeling a little bit sick or unwell, and this expression is under the weather. So again, you're not specifically under the weather, but you could imagine if you're not feeling very well, you might actually feel like there is a gray, dark cloud hanging over you with rain dripping down and you know, you're not feeling very well, you're feeling a bit cold, a little bit miserable, your spirits are low for that reason. So we would use this expression to describe when we are feeling this way. So if you ask someone how they are, they might say to you, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. And this is what they mean by that. They're not feeling very well or they are in low spirits. The next one is, it's right up your alley. And when we say this, we mean that it's something that would be of interest to you, something that you would really like. You could like it because it's to your taste or to your ability. And so you might say, oh, I went to this restaurant the other day. You'd love it. It's right up your alley. Now, if you're looking for an English course that's right up your alley, then I highly recommend our Real Life Native Immersion course. This course will take you on a 41 week real life adventure of the English language, each week exploring a different topic connected to our goal to help you understand and use real native English and make it a permanent part of your life in a way that's fun, natural and convenient. The best part is you can try it right now for free with our three part power learning series. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description box below to learn more and sign up now. We look forward to seeing you there. Okay, our next expression is one of my favorites. It's absolutely hilarious. And it is the bee's knees. 
So when you are referring to something that is the best thing ever, there is nothing that can match it, you would describe it as the bee's knees. So some of our biggest fans might describe our channel as the bee's knees in learning English because they think that there is nothing better. You might go to a concert or you might go to a restaurant and you might say, oh, it's the bee's knees. There is nothing better than this restaurant or this concert. So this one is really funny. I'm not quite sure of the origins, but I have read some things to do with, obviously you can't imagine bees having knees, but the equivalent, this part of their body is where they actually produce the most honey or the sweetest part of the honey. So I guess that's kind of where it comes from. Um, but it is a really common one that natives use a lot. So you might hear it and you could even start using it yourself. Now the next one is used a lot in both the United States and in the UK as well. And it is, Bob's your uncle. So no, I don't have an uncle called Bob, but in English, Bob is a man's name. So therefore that's the reference to the uncle. However, we use this as a way to say, and there it is, or, and there you have it. So the equivalent in French would be, voila. So when something is done, when it's finished, when it's completed, in England, we would say, Bob's your uncle. So for example, someone might be helping you fix something, maybe you're fixing your bike and then you're really deep into trying to fix it and then suddenly you have and you'd say, and Bob's your uncle. And it means, and there it is, it's done, it's fixed. And also, just a note here, in the UK, you might even hear some people add an extension to this one. So they might even say, um, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Okay, so the next expression is also quite interesting. It is, pardon my French. So this one is interesting because you wouldn't actually use it when you're speaking French. You would use it when you have suddenly said a swear word or a curse word. So you might have said something offensive and after you've said it, you might say, pardon my French. Or you might say it before as well, just to warn someone that you're going to curse or say something that's quite offensive. Now this expression can be used in quite a humorous way. It's not when someone has accidentally said something offensive, it's usually intentional. So as a humorous way, they might actually say this after they have said the curse or swear word. Okay, so the next one is the word cheeky. Now, I really love this word. We do use it a lot. Maybe sometimes we actually overuse it, especially in the UK. But normally you would describe someone as cheeky when they're being a little bit naughty or a little bit mischievous. So you probably heard people describe monkeys as cheeky because they are really clever animals and they can be very cheeky in terms of if humans get too close to them in the wild, they'll probably come and grab something from you and run away. So people would call them cheeky monkeys. You'd also hear people refer to children this way. If they're being a little bit naughty, a little bit cute and mischievous, you would say that they are being cheeky. However, in the UK, we do use this word a lot more to describe, again, something where maybe we're being a little bit naughty. For example, maybe you're going to have a glass of wine at a time where it's not usually appropriate or normal for people. So you might say, oh, should we have a cheeky glass of wine? But sometimes it doesn't have to be alcohol. Sometimes people would say, oh, should we have a cheeky cup of tea and there's nothing really cheeky about the tea it's totally fine and normal to have it but it's just a way of expressing this so we like to use this word a lot in the uk and you'll probably hear it in british tv series okay so the next one is really funny because when you actually picture it you think what on earth is this where has this expression come from and it is cat got your tongue and it's important to note it's not a statement it is a question so you would ask someone what's the matter cat got your tongue so you might use this when someone is being fairly quiet or they are not responding to a discussion or a question 
and you would say, what's the matter? Cat got your tongue. So it's kind of implying to them, well, what's happened? All of a sudden you've gone quiet, especially if you're having an argument or a discussion with someone and then all of a sudden they've stopped. It's kind of like, what's the matter? You Do you not have anything to say anymore? And I don't know where this expression has come from, but natives use it a lot in these kinds of situations. But I guess if you think about it, it is a little bit logical because if you imagine a cat actually grabbing hold of your tongue, you're not actually going to be able to say anything or to speak. If you're enjoying this lesson, then I highly recommend you check out this lesson that we made with more than 55 expressions that you can use in conversation. It will be really useful for you to check it out, so you can click up here or down in the description box below to watch that next. And now we're going to take a look at some more typically British expressions that can be confusing. Okay, so the first one is gobsmack. And I love this word. I think it is a really interesting word. In the UK, a slang way of saying mouth is gob. So I think that's where this one comes from. Imagine slapping your gob and maybe not being able to talk. What it actually means is that you are astonished by something. So you are so surprised that you cannot even speak. So you might be experiencing something that makes you gobsmacked, that you cannot even speak in that moment. You are just so surprised and so astounded by it. It might even be that someone has really shocked you or you've been given some really crazy news that you cannot comprehend, that you cannot understand. And you might say, I am absolutely gobsmacked because you will be meaning that you do not know what to say. You are so shocked. Okay, so the next one is used a lot in the UK and it is gutted. Now, we would use this word to describe when we are extremely disappointed with a situation. And I guess it comes from that feeling in your gut when you're really disappointed and upset by something. So you have that feeling in your gut where you're really, really upset and it just sits there and you know it stays there for a really long time and you feel so gutted. So I guess that's where this expression comes from. It's quite an interesting one, but it is one that we do use a lot. Now I love the next one because it comes from Cockney rhyming slang. And if you haven't heard about it before, Cockney rhyming slang originated in the East End of London and it became kind of a language, a way of talking. And it all came from rhyming words. So you might have heard apples and pears being used instead of stairs. So some people would say, oh, I'm just gonna take the apples and pears, or I'm just gonna go up the apples and pears. And what they actually mean is stairs. So it's very interesting. If you would like a lesson on this, then please do comment down below and we can make that happen as well. But the word here or the expression here is actually cream crackered. So this is interesting because cream crackers are a type of food in the UK, they're very popular. We would have them with some cheese or sliced tomato or butter on top. But what it actually means is that you are knackered. So if you hear it there, it rhymes. Cream crackered, knackered. And what knackered means and cream crackered means is that you are exhausted. It's another way of saying that you are so, so tired. You are absolutely exhausted. Okay, so the next one is it's pear-shaped or it's gone pear-shaped. Now, if something has gone pear-shaped, it means that it has gone totally wrong. So whatever you set out to do has completely failed. And I guess this comes from a pear shape being quite different. It's not as round as an apple, kind of has the, the, the thinner top and then kind of bulks out at the bottom. It gets larger at the bottom. And I guess lots of pears can be all different shapes. So I guess that's where this one comes from. But if you hear the expression, it's gone pear-shaped, that means that it's totally gone wrong or has failed. Now, I really love the next one. I think it's really funny and it could confuse people a lot. It might be a bit of a dangerous one and it is cost a bomb. So if something costs a bomb, it means that it is super expensive. 
Now, when speaking to Ethan, I learned that they don't have this expression in the US, but they would say it cost an arm and a leg. And we use this as well in the UK, but we do also use cost a bomb. And it's just a way of describing something as really expensive. So the next one that we use a lot in the UK is it's a shambles. So this sounds like a really nonsense word. It sounds like gibberish, like you don't understand what it means. But what it does mean is that something is totally unorganized and just really bad. So for example, the other day, I was watching football, watching my team, and it wasn't going very well at all. And I heard my husband say, it's a shambles. This team is a shambles. So it means that they were really disorganized and they were not playing very well, but you can use it for other things as well. So you might describe an event that you've been to as a shambles. You might even describe a class that you've been to as a shambles and many, many other things. Okay, so the last one that we're going to have a look at is Bagsy. So this one in the US would be shotgun. So you probably heard this in TV series and movies when people are walking to a car, someone might say shotgun, and that means that they are going to ride in the front of the passenger seat. Okay, so we would use this as well in the UK, but we would say bagsy. And we don't only use it for this purpose, we also use it to bagsy other things. Another word also that means the same is dibs. So you might say, I've got dibs on the pepperoni pizza, for example. So it means that you want to have that first. Or if you are amongst friends, you might say, oh, I bag the, the lemon meringue pie if there's lots of different desserts there and you have to choose one. So if you bag see it, it means that you have preference. So you're going to get to choose it first. So it's a little bit similar to shotgun, but in the UK we use it for a lot more things and it's one that you will hear a lot in the UK as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and that these English expressions that you've learned today are not so confusing anymore. And don't forget to have a listen to our podcast if you haven't already, where you can hear some more confusing expressions. And also on our Instagram, there are a few exclusive ones there also. And I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Take care. So let's look at some instances of this that you will find all the time. So in school, they probably taught you to say these like Serious Sam. Let's see, got to, want to, have to, going to. However, it's pretty uncommon that you will hear natives speak this way. Most natives will actually speak like my friend, Street Stan. Yeah, man, I'd say like gotta, wanna, gonna, have to. So maybe you already know about those ones,